mess it up. All right, it's 6.46. Uh, the Finance Committee meeting is starting 15 minutes late because of a, another meeting that ran longer. If we can, let's salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Indivisible. No, I missed the part. And I'm the one that's always talking about being a veteran. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, what we have here, Dane Ocas O'Neill and myself are part of the Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Rathgeb and Ms. Radowski are in this other meeting that is not apparently completed yet. Uh, from the administration, we have Mr. Harris. Mr. Hurley, Mr. Small, and Mr. Miller, and member of the public, we have Mr. Kurtz. So we'll jump ahead to item three on the contract. Mr. Miller, you want to discuss these two real estate appeals? Yes. Um, we had two taxpayers uh, upset that they, uh, in certain cases, feel like they should not have to pay the penalty on their taxes. I have two cases here. There were others that approached me and I, I said I needed uh, documentation through email and uh, I did not hear back, but two did respond. Uh, the first case is William and Christine Schoenlin at 9 Caligro Drive, Douglasville. Uh, in this case, originally uh, uh, this taxpayer paid on time, but um, Actually, it was 40 cents short, but we still credited the taxpayer for uh, uh, receipt of taxes before in the flat period. Uh, on 11 16, uh, the tax office received notification from a uh, bank. Uh, actually, this taxpayer uh, paid the tax and bill in uh, two checks, and one of the checks bounced and it was returned to the taxpayer. Also, a fee was a uh, $20 fee is assessed. Uh, normally, this would be an open and, and shut case, but the, in this case, the taxpayer had the uh, amounts in his bank account. And they were two checks from two different bank accounts, and he had the amounts uh, in the wrong bank account. Or he wrote the checks for the wrong amounts for what he had in each bank account, so one of the checks bounced. Uh, in this case, it is a pretty sizable tax bill. The flat uh, tax bill would be $72.59.55, so the 10% penalty on that would be uh, about $726. So in this case, this, this taxpayer is appealing to me. Um, should I move on to the next case, or do you want to debate about this? Well, oh, no, I just wanted to ask a simple question. So because their check bounced, the taxes were considered unpaid. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it went back to the taxpayer, and uh, attached in the packet is actually the form letter that was sent back to the taxpayer. In this case, yes, it is viewed as unpaid taxes when your check bounces. Even if you pay partial, in this case, one check went through, one bounced, it still did not pay the flat amount of taxes due, so the amount was refunded that went through to the taxpayer. And yes, it would push them into the penalty period. So what's the recommendation of the business office? Um, I don't want to set a precedent that bounced checks are okay. Even though I um, have sympathy for the taxpayer that um, they uh, uh, had the funds I, I, could, I can only go that far. They did bounce their checks. Dane, do you have any thoughts on this? I certainly understand what Mike is saying about not setting a precedent. Uh, my only um, reluctance would be if, if that's all they had said, if, if they had simply said it here, well, I was reading the letter while you were talking, I was listening to you, but also... Uh, reading what's here, I don't know how I feel about the timing, right? I mean, like, 
the fact that the check that, they, that we received the check a couple weeks before they were cashed. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I just haven't had time to think about it a lot. But I, I do think that the timing makes it less um, of a slam dunk than it might otherwise be. But I, I'm inclined to agree with you, Mike, that it sets a bad precedent if we, if we make an exception there. Well, I agree that full board's got to vote on this on Monday night, so but we'll move forward with a recommendation to collect the penalty. You want to go to the second one? Okay, let's go to the uh, second case. Uh, this one's much simpler and the amount in question um, is about $41. Put it very simply, uh, this taxpayer was eligible for an interim tax bill and uh, he uh, claims he did not receive it until he received the notice of late taxes. Um, and that is his case. And um, in essence, we send out thousands upon thousands of bills, and yes, there is a chance that some people will not receive the tax bills for whatever reason, but it is written on our website on, and on the tax bill that uh, failure to receive a bill does not entitle the owner to discount or remission of penalty on taxes. Therefore, I, I would recommend to stand by what is written on the bill and our website. Excuse me one second. Just uh, for the record, we've been joined. The other meeting apparently ended. We've been joined by Mr. Rathke, Mr. Rodowski. Mr. Wolf has also joined us, and a member of the public, Mr. Miller, has also been seated. Mr. Kurtz and Mr. Miller, did you both sign in in the back? Thank you. So your recommendation on this, Mr. Rathke and Mr. Rodowski, these are people that have been assessed penalties for not paying their taxes on time. The first one, the check bounced, and the claim was that he wrote the check off the wrong account. And it's a considerable penalty. It's about $700. But Mr. Ocas O'Neill and I both agreed that we're going to recommend to the board that he has to pay it. The second one is Mr. Miller was just explaining. Uh, they claim they didn't get their tax bill in time to pay it. That's correct. And they uh, received the, their late notice, and that's when they became aware of the tax bill. But our policy is that we're not, even if they do not receive the tax bill, they're still liable for the taxes and they're liable to pay on time or end or any penalties assessed. I would tend to right. agree. If you're I mean, a, if credit you're a card, resident, mortgage, everything you're, else. It's not like it's a, it comes as a surprise right. every year. I can't call the IRS and say I didn't get my W-2, right. so I didn't file my uh, taxes yeah. this year. <laughs> I, I, would, I, would recommend, I, would, I would agree with this recommendation. Of, sorry. Okay, so that's that's an easy one. Then we recommend that both. Uh, Mr. Martinez, about to tell us the post office. <laughs> post office, since I retired, has gone downhill. I will. I went out on the record, but. Uh, all right, that was item three on the agenda, and Mr. Smaller, we're going to add a one agenda edit, and that's on the the health care consultant. Ms. Rodowski has a couple questions that she will bring up, and hopefully we can get some answers before Monday night. But let's go back to the agenda and go, go to item one. And this, this will be the Lauren Small Show. This will be the Mr. Small Show where the governor has released part of the 2015-16 budget. Mr. Small will advise how that impacts the Daniel Boone School District both for this year and going forward into 16-17. Thank you. Okay. 
from the top. 15, 16 a year. I, uh, I gave you a couple of uh, pieces there. As you're well aware, the governor did a line item veto so as to release some funds. One handout that I gave you is two pages. The front page is labeled 1516 Estimated Funding, Basic Ed, and Ready to Learn Block Grant. And the other is similar, only it's uh, Basic Ed and Special Ed. The top page is what was just released this, this week. I uh, also gave you a, a summary sheet of what was released this week. We received 7.3 million of our 15, 16 uh, state subsidies on Tuesday this week. And what I broke down for you was by columns is your basic ed, your special ed, no, pardon, my own. Uh, basic ed, we received 3.396 million. We're projecting we should get 8.145 million. So we got 41% of that, 37.6 of special ed. Social Security, 55.7. Retirement, 49.87. Transportation, 57.24 for an average of 48.43. So I just put that out there. You're hearing things on the media that said we got half the year, we got six months, we got whatever. So that's what Daniel Boone received. On the other sheets, you can see the breakdown as well as it relates to this block grant. It's actually on the other sheet as well for 406145 And they initially said that we weren't going to receive the block grant this year. It was going to be eliminated. Last year, in the 14-15 uh, year, we received 370000 But they said we're going to add it into basic ed. That was the governor's original proposal. Then over the course of the summer and the fall, with all that's been going on, they said, yeah, we're going to bring it back, and it's going to be at the same level as last year. But we didn't know. What, uh, what it could be used for, whatnot. Then when the number came out this week, it was 406000 Well, the reason it is 406000 now they claim they're going to give us last year's block grant, which was used for training. Rob, Mr. Hurley, you can jump in. Well, we, we ended up using some of it for textbooks there in June. But the difference, the 40000 36000 whatever the number is, increase three years ago they eliminated any form of reimbursement for what we're paying to charter schools. For years, we got roughly 30% thereabouts. So they say, we're, we're going to start giving you some of that back. But they haven't given us the details on how the math works on that. So that's what the 406000 So we received all of that this week uh, in the, in the uh, $7.3 million. So I just put that out in front of you so you know how much we, we did receive. We, still, uh, we were still in good shape. We were good till March, but uh, uh, at least we received $7.3 million. Now, what I want to point out to you on the two pages that I have stapled together, if you look at the second page under the basic education funding session section, you will see a column where it said 2015-16 propo proposed increase for Daniel Boone for basic ed was going to be $301,760. That is what was in the budget that was being circulated and voted on the week before Christmas. Based upon this second sheet and the numbers on this sheet, that's what I brought forward to you uh, on the 22nd of December, that we were going to get an additional $301,760. But if you look at the front sheet, which is what we actually received or were, are being told we're going to receive, that came out this week after the Senate sent back the bill to the House, which instead of being a $350 million education bill is $100 million. Right now, based on the formula, and I don't know if it's the governor's formula or if who came up with the formula for how to distribute what they distributed this week. But now they're saying we're only going to get $8,145,750 in basic ed, which would be about $59,000. So what was $301,000 as of today is $59,000. If I can interrupt you a second, this, this is the governor's formula. There's already 
contention from the House leadership, at least, that he did not use the formula that was agreed upon and instead gave a large lump sum to Philadelphia and took it out of everybody else's. They're talking, if they can't negotiate a settlement, they're talking about a lawsuit. Where that's going to go, who knows? So, where I am tonight, as opposed to where I was two weeks ago on the 22nd of December, that's why I distributed these sheets tonight. As far as special ed, on the second page, I've received no indication that there's any change on that. So, having said all that, if you move to your five-year projection, your five-year study, and you look at the 15, 16 year, the year we're living in now, second column from the left, you will see that I am using the new, under state revenue, I'm using the new basic education grant number of 8145750 which is down from the 8300000 that I had shown you in the uh, I also increased the block grant portion because we already received that. <coughs> and because of all the controversy that's going on, I, for 16-17 on the third column, I simply flatlined basic ed. They were telling us before Christmas that we could anticipate a two-year commitment once they got everything hashed out here. <coughs> Because quite frankly, the first Tuesday of February, the governor is required to present the 1617 budget, and so they were going to make it easy. We would know moving into our budget development for 1617 pretty much where we were going to be. So I have backed that <clears throat> basic ed back to the uh, same level for both 1516 and 1617. So as a result, you can run the, follow the numbers down through. Nothing else has been impacted except the 16-17 year now, based upon your, <coughs> your resolution that you approved on the 22nd of December to adopt a preliminary 2016-17 budget that would be driven out by... Uh, taxes to the index as well as the exception. So that's why if you look at the third column from the left on a five-year plan down under local real estate, the millage goes from 28.96 in the current year to the 30.7167 because that is made up of 28.96 plus an additional 0.9267, which would take you to the index, and another 0.83, roughly eight tenths of a mil, for the exception. So, based upon your resolution in December, I have, by Act One, uh, changed the millage to uh, encompass both uh, both of those tax areas, those increases, and thus the. 30.7167. The budget document that we distributed tonight in state fashion, the 2028 document, reflects the numbers on your five year plan for 1617. So moving forward, based upon Act 1. You adopted a preliminary budget on December 22nd. Next week, we uh, are required to advertise that we have a preliminary budget in motion. And then we have until we advertise and say that we've got it out there. And then by the uh, 27th, of January, we need to adopt this preliminary budget uh, and, and uh, submit it as a preliminary budget to Harrisburg. That's the early budget cycle. 
And at the same time, we need to uh, submit an application to PDE for exception due to PCERS increases. So I'll be having that on the agendas coming up to get this done. Now, keep in mind what this does, you, you're, you either adopt the, the, the resolution to not exceed the index or you adopt the preliminary budget in the early cycle. You chose not to adopt the index, so therefore you're in the early budget cycle. So now you've got uh, until May to adopt the budget, the same as if, if you had adopted the index resolution, you'd be doing your budget. So you, you simply are adopting a preliminary budget. You have the funds available to you to go to the index. And presuming you get an approval from CDE, which everyone should because of PCERS, you have the latitude to do the additional eight-tenths of a mil, if you will, for the exception. And then you, you have time to work it through. Hopefully, hopefully by the spring, we'll know what we got for the 15-16 year, which will tell us how we're going to end the 15-16 year, that'll tell us what we have to work with, fund balance and otherwise, for the 16-17 year. Hopefully. Uh, but right now, what I put before you tonight is everything that I know as of Tuesday, because nothing came out yesterday or today. Now, are they going to come back and increase this basic ed number that I gave you on the handout here? I'd like to think so. I was saying to a couple of people, $59,000? Suppose, just suppose that Daniel Boone had to borrow that $7 million or $6 million that we just got for five months. What's the borrowing cost? There you are. So these districts, well, Berks IU, how much is the borrowing cost at Berks IU, Mr. Rathke? Uh We haven't seen the cost yet. We just know how much, I mean, as far as the percentage goes, we know what that was. Right. But as far as the cost, and, and you, you look at how much they would have gotten, there's, districts that had to borrow money are in trouble. And the other piece that they talked about all summer, oh, we'll, we'll have provision to cover their cost of borrowing. And not hearing that. So, you know, we're... That's where we're at. So uh, I'm just going to, I'll move ahead. I'll advertise your preliminary budget uh, that per the resolution on the 22nd of December. And we'll wait and see how things come together here. If you would, just so I understand, how much does the index, not percentage, dollars, how much does the index generate? How much does the exception generate? The index generates $966,389 at 98% collection rate. And the exception would generate an additional $865,548. So that's a, a million eight. Uh, the reason I ask is, is what you're showing here is... Based on, on the numbers you have now, again, those numbers could change, but we would end this year with a $4.3 million fund balance. We would end next year with a $3.2 million fund balance. And we actually don't go in the hole until 18, 19, and that's if nothing else changes. Right, that's, that's moving to a 30.7167 millage and I left the 30.71 in place for the 17, 18, 18, 19 years. And virtually no adjustment to assessment, just a, a very slight increase on the assessment. So depending on what may or may not happen with the local assessment, uh, that, could, that could increase your, your revenue as well. But, Quite frankly, the 16-17 the, the, uh, year assessment-wise is the only thing that I can... And those, those fund balance numbers, too, are dependent upon the PCERS factors, which aren't finalized, I mean, right? Like, they could change? No, PCERS should not change uh, because if you go down to under expenditures, under retirement, the third line item on the second page, those percentages 
to the right, you can see a 0 .3003. One thing that could change on that one is that the first week of December every year, the Peace Risk Board meets and they establish, based on actuarial studies, they, they have projected five years ago what our new Peace Risk rates were going to be, and that's what these numbers that you see here are. However, when the Peace Risk Board meets the first uh, week of December, they have to verify that those are good numbers, and the legislature now, under Act 1, has control. So, we were at 29 point something, and they, when they met the 1st of December, it increased to 0.3. Right. However, as a part of the original bill, whatever that number is, when it was a $350 million budget, the legislature was saying, no, not so fast, Peacers Board, we're going to reduce that to 27% this year. But then when the bill went away, so did the 27% Peacers contribution. So, will any of that return and help us? Because a 3% decrease in Peacers contribution would be a help. But right. we're playing with what so we know. The factor could change every year when the board yep. when the board yep. meets yep. and yep. Based on whatever happens yeah. here with the budget negotiations, they could also get reduced. Well, my suspicion they, is that their investment performance was not going to be up to par, but. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> based I, on history, this is the first year I've seen them play with that percentage in December. And then the legislature came back and said, well, we're going to show you what we're going to do. So Because they're financial gurus. Right. So, but those percentages in the 16, 17 year, you have the point now, the point three zero three or whatever, and then, then it, it pretty much flatlines now. We, we've, once we, I keep referring to this hump here, once we get to 16, 17, and we, we went from 21 to 25 to 30, now things begin to level. And keep in mind, I keep raising this issue, I'm working with, with RBC already on the refinancing of the $40 million state pub. I was so, going to ask you if they, anything on what we that closed yesterday. That's done. And I haven't seen the final numbers, but they, I, they told me that the saving numbers are very similar to what we, the 180000 for this year and 300 some for right, like 6700 And are those yes. numbers in here? Yes. Okay. Yes. The other thing that, that could impact PEASERS is the number of teachers. Of course. Of course. And, and we haven't really been looking at enrollment, but as in past years, it's still declining. And I looked at it this afternoon, and based on current enrollment, we would lose two first grade teachers next year, a second grade teacher, a fourth grade teacher, and we would have to add a fifth grade teacher. So the net would be three teachers, which is, using what we've used in the past, that's $300,000. We also have no idea what Jim Thompson's going to tell us he found Monday night. So I, I don't want to argue the budget tonight. We voted last week five to four, if I remember the vote, to submit a preliminary budget with the index plus the exception. Um, so next year's budget doesn't show any retirees or, or furloughs no, at this and, point? Okay. And that's what I'm saying. So it, you, you've got three in the hole right now, possibly. And what did, uh, did you leave the health care assumptions as is from what you had? Yes. I haven't changed that yet. Do you know something did I don't? No. Okay. <laughs> but now, I heard, I, or saw, or read, I don't remember, as part of the budget thing, that was part of the budget discussions, I guess there was a, a sector or a group that was looking at taking out all the plan time payments? That was a part of the original budget last March. And what they were going to do is borrow megabucks. I think it was into the, probably into the trillions. And they were going to, because of all the districts, 150 districts that are in the pipeline that had submitted their plan count over the last three years, had submitted their completed their construction, submitted their plan count, and they would do the payments, and then they did the moratorium on on paying any new plan cut. So these districts 
were caught with their bond payments, but no reimbursement. So this has been hanging out there for three years. So when the governor's budget came out last March, they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to borrow this huge sum of money. We're going to pay, catch up all of those districts that are owed back money for PlanCon. And, oh, by the way, we're going to buy out everyone, such as Daniel Boone, that are already in the pipe or in the program. We're going to pay off everything we owe them. And then we're going to come forward with a new plan for school construction because PlanCon is outdated. Well, that's been bantered back and forth back in uh, uh, September, October, when Lou Verdelli from RBC first came. He was, okay, was talking so about it. But that's all gone away now. I th okay, because the way I, whatever article I read, or I thought they were just not going to make PlanCon payments, period. Like, it was done. If you hadn't got, so I guess what I was asking is if, if that would be the case, would that negatively affect us? Well, what, <laughs> when they said they were going to stop making plan con, they were going to stop the subsidy plan. They were going to do it up front and be done with okay. it. Okay. It was actually going to benefit us. And, okay. and I forget, I had asked you, what was the number? $12 million. That we would have gotten? That's how much, if you. Right. That and that, well, my fear was the way I read this article was that they weren't going, it was just like, oh, well, we're, it went away. No. And I was say, oh, how much are we out? No. no. <laughs> but no. but, it, but if they if we do stop, if they did stop, None of that's included in our budget anyway, though, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, it is? Go down under uh, revenue, state revenue, mm -hmm. debt service subsidy, 600000 700000 Oh, I see it. Okay. So let me ask a different question then. Could they really do that without without massive lawsuits? <laughs> they can do so. whatever they want. No, I didn't think so either. No, I know they can do it, but... <laughs> I think if, if this little school district is owed $12 million, you know, there, there's going to be, I, I don't think they really want to get into that. I haven't, I haven't mentioned it to Lou in the last couple of weeks, but back when that $350 million educational deal, the, the, uh, the borrowing to eliminate plan con had kind of gone, gone on the back burner. But, but I would wonder, they haven't made payments for three years now? They haven't made payments to that new districts, new, new, we, we new out. We, 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 we were okay. grandfathered. Okay. So we've been getting our money that you have listed yes. here. Okay. okay. Yes. You know, and that's something if you, and I have been, I, I've been following it religiously, the, the back and forth between the governor and the Senate and the House, because, I mean, you're talking three different entities here, and even the House and Senate are split. We really have no idea. None of these numbers are final yet. I mean, the governor's still holding out for what he terms his framework. Uh, the Senate caved because I think they just wanted to go home for Christmas. And the House is still saying they want a, a budget with no tax increases. So Lord knows what, what we're going to wind up with. And, and this will be very interesting, as Mr. Small said, the first Tuesday of February... He's supposed to be presenting next year's budget. Wow. So that should be a lot of fun to watch, too. Any questions? Anything? You digest this, give me a call, give me an email. Uh, I, I, I think I said to Rob and Mr. Harris, I, I, I've never been in a situation in all my years where I'm trying to work two budgets with no certainty in anything. The only certainty I had when I came in last Wednesday after the governor spoke on Tuesday and I went on PDE and, and it said that on the 4th of January I was going to receive this much, 400, and, no, it's more than that. I was going to receive the first batch and then on the 5th of January on Tuesday I was going to receive receive an additional amount, the total was going to be the $7.3 million. However, on the 7th of December, we had been sent a, a document saying we were going to get $4.5 million on the fourth day of January. That was long before they even started on this $350 million, and that was just smoke and mirrors from the governor saying, hey, I got the money ready for you folks. These, this legislature just getting geared. So I come in last, uh, last Wednesday and that all went away, and they'd come up with these two numbers, and then 
Mike and I came in Monday morning. I said, okay, Mike, what are they saying this morning? And they said, yeah, you're still getting the $7.3 million, but we're not going to give it to you on Tuesday. Somebody's got to move. Hey, Rob, that's your job, Rob. <laughs> Good so, job, Rob. So anyway, that's, that's the uncertainty of the whole thing. And I, I, I said at the time, I'm not going to cash the check until it clears the bank. It comes electronically, but, but uh, we... Uh, Tuesday morning. And I brought the students to make a documentary out of this. And for, uh, for, uh, exactly. Let me ask you one last question. We had, we had scheduled this meeting with the possibility we were going to have to make contingency plans if, if nothing was resolved. So do you have any idea how far into the year this money takes us before we have to worry about any contingency plans? No, we're, we were good until, until March. Before this money came in. Before this right. money came in, so we're, we're all right. We should be all right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. We will. To next August? Well, to August, I should think. Good till July, at least. Yeah, I would tack on two months, maybe. Yeah. The question is what, what are some of the districts that were already out of money? Now they're getting half the money, they'll probably still be basically out of money. Well, and even what, what Lauren was saying about these districts that borrowed money, there's no talk anywhere about reimbursing them for their interest, and, and the interest on millions of dollars is considerable. I mean, uh, I guess technically those districts could sue for that, but I don't know how much traction they get. Yeah, but nothing from nothing is still nothing. I mean, you start suing, suing another governmental body. Now, we uh, decided we weren't going to pay our contribution to PEASERS. How, how is that all being rectified in here? That was a piece I was going to bring up. I was going to circulate. We okay. got the memo. They're, they're going to deduct that from our payment. No. No, we have no, to pay no. it. We got, we got the email the same day we got the money. Oh, by the way, we released these two retirement payments to you, which they did. That's part of the $7.3 million. And the law says when they released it, it's due, yeah, it was due the 12th. They, they but we only withheld one. Yeah, but we paid September. So we only had to pay the December one. So, so we. So they were quick to point out that part of that seven. Absolutely. Was, 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 <laughs> oh yeah. yeah that's and and we uh, see these these charter schools. They uh, when you don't pay their invoice, they uh, notify PDE that you uh, this Daniel Boone didn't pay our invoice. So a couple times a year, they withhold it from our. If it's not paid, they will pull it from our subsidy. Well, one of them was standing in line on, I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, Commonwealth Connections Academy. They got $78,728 for their July to September. So they were, they were waiting. I'm surprised more weren't there with their hand out saying, hey. So that will happen over time, too. But, but I believe the direction I had was that until the budget impasse was over, that I was to withhold payments. So now that I did get the retirement subsidy, I can identify that I got my retirement subsidy. The law says I have five days to, to send their pay. So we got five days of a float. We can take a little bit of scratch. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions for Mr. Small? Any questions from the public on the budget? Saying that, we'll move on. The, the two other items that should be fairly quick. Uh, use of grant money, and, and Mr. Small and I were discussing this. We've got some considerable size grants in the past year and a half that the board has approved the receipt of the money. We're not sure how the money gets spent. And one of the, like the wellness grant, Last year's wellness grant, if I'm not mistaken, part of it was for exercise equipment. It was for student and staff fitness equipment. Well, we don't know where it is. And Mr. Kurtz and I were at the high school the other day, and we asked Mr. McKnight, and he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you, you, there were other grants. You wanted... I remember the, the, the grant for the, that was the new grant. There were two. You, you have received two wellness grants over the last two years in the seventy thousand. It's roughly one 
140,000. I thought the other one was for the greenhouse for the middle. Well, that's separate. That's separate. Okay. That's separate. Yeah, there, there's a lot of money that, that has come in in grants. and. They just give it to the, you. Part, you part of the bonus grant was spent for the greenhouse. He's correct in that um, because we tied that into um, some of our... For the wellness grant? Consumed. Yes. Is that right? Family well, that's what, that's, that's what I thought I recall that. Yeah. That's, and the, the fitness equipment, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but the, the, the boosters just got that new grant. Which how he had come in yet to to redo the the, the gym over the weight room the weight room over at the but there was a previous grant and in fact there there's a beautiful treadmill on the top floor here 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 yes, yes. beautiful treadmill well that's one of the per perks we get, we get to the <laughs> you get a gym membership <laughs> well and that that's anybody? the thing it's upstairs in in <laughs> who's using it who's it for I mean. Our staff in this building is, is small, and most of them are hourly rate employees anyway. So. I thought you were saying we're fat. I, I, no. I, I don't know if that's small. Until I need 20 pounds, the there's no way I'll tell anybody fat. fat here. No. According to my Fitbit, I have Wait, 4,402 <laughs> steps so far today, and I haven't left the building. It's Mr. Harris has you running back and forth, it, I guess. So, so when, when the, the grant money comes in, where does that grant money go? The grant uh, money goes into it, to the coffers, and we, we process it through purchase orders and whatnot. So we have purchase orders, and we know what's being well, yes. They're not exceeding the grant or anything like that, but it's the idea of well, the board well, I, I think when, when they when they, when, when, they when I think when you write the grant, you're writing it for a specific need, otherwise they don't give you the grant, right? I think what I think what Mr. Martino was saying would be good to get a reporting back to the board. What was this for? Yeah, seventy thousand dollars comes in. Here's how it was spent. You know, just just so we we know. Yeah, I can I can tell you they bought barbells and they bought treadmills and they bought this, but I don't know where they are. Well, and Mr. McKnight doesn't know where they're at. <laughs> well, it sounds like they didn't buy barbells. I think they used the use of the greenhouse. No, there's there's some, some of it. Some there's some POs for they've used it. I, know, I just show like the hip guys like the student assistance program. Um, we pay for carriages. Yeah. Well, that's what we're saying. Yeah. What was the grant for, and how was it actually spent? And then when Mr. Kurtz and I, Mr. Kurtz made his annual Christmas time visit to the high school. When we asked Mr. McKnight, his answer was, I "Need to ask Charlie Mikowski. She handles all that." <laughs> so, you know, we don't know. But anyway, it's just it's just a matter. I mean, you're talking that that's a considerable amount of money, and okay. we, we could start an employee gym charge membership. Uh, there you go. Right, we're not even charging memberships. It, it, so, it would actually be beneficial to us if they were healthier. Would there would there, would there be a problem? One because we don't, we don't, we don't get to trust. We don't, I know. Get that's true. Would there be a problem with each grant that that is approved then tracking how the money's spent? has to be done that way. Anyway, we have to be accountable for what the grant is used for. Yeah, it should be. But every, every grant is audited. Get audited. Yeah. Every yeah. grant is audited. So we have to use it like you said. It's written for a purpose or a big algorithm purpose. And then through the POs. Yeah. You don't want to be at the end of the grant not use it all. Right. Or, yeah. And if it's not so used... We don't want to come back. We, we get this, this, this pop town wellness grant every year. We don't want to come back and say, oh, well, you guys, you know, didn't use it right or... Well, that's what I'm saying. So whether it's seventy thousand or thirty thousand, as the grant comes in, as, as that money is spent, we should have a report that shows how the entire amount was spent. I agree. For all Yes. Right. So. Yep. No issue. Okay. Good. And correct me if I'm wrong. Your sense is saying it's already being done, right? Like we're not seeing it, but no, it's I'm already not, being. I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying. Okay. That the grant was written for a reason, or we received it, and through various allocations, the money is spent. But as of right now, I don't know if anyone's tracking specific grants and seeing if they're used in the correct okay. way. When, when you said that the grants are audited, I thought you were saying. Oh no, we, I'm saying in fear of being audited. Okay, we right. should. Right. So that, and that's what I thought you were saying. I thought you were saying because we know that they could be audited, we're yes. already doing yeah, that. Yeah, we should have, no, we should have a, rec a better record. Yeah. If we have one, we sh it should be better. 
Last thing I have is, is upstairs, Mr. Podowski, you, you had some questions about this, this health consultant that only, only Mr. Small can answer. So. Or at least if he can't answer, he could try and have the answers by Monday, I hope. Um, I saw, I think the proposal was out when and he had mentioned that um, he was going to get, I guess, proposal from, a proposal from Blue Cross Blue Shield for a sort of self-funded ASO or something. I mean, I, I know, but that was a specific one. And then he was going to uh, secure proposals from other trusts or yes. such type of things. Yeah. I guess what I, do we, did he give us a, a, a number of, proposals he intended to come back with or give us an idea of who he was going to speak with or um, those kinds of things. And then I guess the other question is, in the proposals, is he getting apples to apples proposals and, and, and ensuring that they're apples to apples proposals? Because we really can't go outside of what we have it with the trust because of the contractual allegations. Correct. Um, and it's oftentimes hard to match plan for plan 100%. And if they're not 100%, it can really skew the numbers. Right. Right. Dave was there that night as well um, when we discussed this. The idea being that under our current trust arrangements, we have no flexibility. If there's 20 districts in the trust. They're all the same. It's, it's a pooled trust. And what Rob is saying that he has worked with other trusts in the state uh, where there's more flexibility for the individual members within the trust to benefit and make changes if they want to. And yes, he understands that whatever he brings forward because of the contractual, because of the bargaining agreements, the way they're worded as it relates to equal to or better, whatever it is. Uh, that, but what, what he's trying to do now for the proposal was to reach out to some of these trusts and bring back some options to us that would provide this flexibility that we don't have now. Whether it be a totally self-funded or if, it were a, if we were part of another pooled trust that would provide those flexibilities. I see. I guess my concern with that, and I guess what I'm what I'm struggling with is. I think maybe okay. what Ms. Kardowski's concern was, um, if Rob comes back with trust A, B, C, and a uh, self-funded, uh, you know, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield plan or whatever. Totally self-funded. Um, right. Yeah. Well, so with, with with all those plans have the, the same benefits. So we have, okay, plan A is going to cost us X, plan B is Y, but they're the same exact uh, benefit structure, which would the unions would accept because it's uh, the but, same as and, they and, have now. And now, and now, <laughs> and now under, under this trust, now we'd have the platinum plan still, and we'd have an optional plan B, plan C for, for okay. to, uh, a lower cost. Uh, and her other question is, is that something that we could actually do ourselves, go out to these trusts and get those quotes instead of paying $8,000 to get it? Um, and, and I'll throw in on top of that if, if uh, I'd, I'd ask Robert to at, at the meeting. So if we pay $8,000 for him to, to consult and we do, uh, do say choose to, to uh, say, okay, hey, Rob, we like this uh, pool trust. We think it's a great idea, a good proposal. Would he then get a commission from that trust on top of that for bringing us in there? Uh, if that's the case, I, I would prefer that those, those be separate. I mean, if we're going to pay him, we're going to pay him, and there should be no commission to him. Or if we're going to do him via commission, then we should be paying him for the, you know, it should be kind of one or the other. But. All right, I'll reach out to him tomorrow and uh, have him verify some things. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, because I don't know how to compare. If he's not coming back with the same plan, how do you compare it, right? And if he's going out and getting the other options, well, we could do that. I mean, we could do that ourselves. I can go to Benicon. I can go to Divid. I can, well, give me some options that would save me money. I would not. You know, I don't have to pay somebody to do that. I, it, well, as far as the plans, our contracts with with the, the employees basically say that if we change, it has to be equal to or better than equivalent. Equivalent. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that, that's new. I mean, there, I'm sure we could. So, so if he came modest, back, he'd have yeah. to have an equivalent plan and other flexible right. options. Right. As far as as 
and I think doing it ourselves. That as well. As How much time would that take to do it ourselves? Take a lot of time. And and who would do? Yeah. Well, and then I know it would take time for us. I'm not. I mean, I understand that. Um, I just think the consulting rate is high for that. <laughs> um, now, if 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 he's if he's ensuring that everything's exactly the same, and because like I said it's very hard when you're comparing health plans because nobody's exactly the same. They all have a little bit. And of uh, yeah, Rob, Rob, uh, Rob should get here for his work. Right. Yeah. No, no question. Plus, you're yeah. looking at historical information of how. How well it's how well it's been run, what their right. escalation schedule has been over the years, because right. um, that has to factor in. I mean, when we joined the trust, I think we were pulling like eight eight percent was our contribution because they were building up that fund, right. and then it backed down. Right, and would he be analyzing that as well? Because if it saves us money the first year, but the rates jump fifteen percent every year, it may not save us over five years or three years. So. Um, I just thought the proposal was sort of general. You know what I mean? I was, I guess, I was I'll get, looking I'll for. I'll more specific from it. Thank you. Okay. Any other finance questions? Seeing none. Um, just for the record, Mr. Harley has agreed to to reach out to Mr. Thompson tomorrow to remind him about Monday night, so we're not all sitting here with just each other to talk to. Right. Is that six or six? He has been, six o'clock. Okay. He has been emailing. All the buildings this week with his proposed or his summary of the buildings. Okay. He's alive and well. Are you ready to adjourn? Thank you. Okay. Tonight's meeting is adjourned at 7:37. Are you going to?